Israel's president, Isaac Herzog, clarified on Sunday that the expulsion of Palestinians is not the official policy of the government, despite some calls for it from members of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government. Herzog emphasized that the official Israeli position does not support such measures. He acknowledged the freedom of ministers to express their views but stated that it doesn't necessarily reflect the government's stance. The discussion arises in the aftermath of the conflict between Israel and Hamas, with casualties exceeding 24,000. Some members of the Israeli government have suggested relocating Palestinians from Gaza as a possible solution. The United States rejected this idea, calling it inflammatory and irresponsible. President Herzog highlighted the deep trauma experienced by Israel in recent months, citing the hostage situation on October 7, with over 100 hostages still held, and emphasized the nation's efforts to address the situation. The Israel Defense Forces, IDF, announced that they believe Hamas terrorists have acquired cruise missile capabilities with assistance from Tehran. The IDF discovered evidence of these advanced capabilities during a raid in Gaza City, specifically in the Derich and Tufa neighborhoods. The military found components indicating that Hamas, under Iranian guidance, learned to operate and build precision missile production components and strategic weapons. A video posted by the IDF showed findings in a Hamas tunnel, suggesting collaboration between Hamas and Iran. The announcement came as the Israel-Hamas conflict entered its fourth month. According to IDF spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, Israel has dismantled Hamas military framework in northern Gaza and is now focusing on the central and southern regions. The Israeli Air Force has deployed the Tal Shemaim, or Sky Do, radar blimp along the Israel Lebanon border amid escalating tensions with Hezbollah. This large high altitude observation balloon, developed through a collaboration between the US and Israel, is equipped with advanced radar and an aerostat system. The blimp, received by the Israeli Air Force in 2022, enhances detection and early warning capabilities against long-range missiles, cruise missiles, and drones. Israel has been facing threats in the northern theater, prompting the deployment of this system to strengthen air control capabilities. The heightened conflict with Hezbollah follows recent attacks by Hamas on Israel, leading to increased hostilities and cross-border incidents, including airstrikes and missile exchanges. The U.S. has been involved in supporting Israel's defense systems, such as the Iron Dome, with significant financial assistance. Concerned about the potential for a full-blown war between Israel and Hezbollah, the Biden administration has dispatched aides to the Middle East in an effort to diplomatically prevent further escalations. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is visiting Israel amid concerns that the Gaza conflict may escalate regionally. Blinken emphasized the need for displaced Palestinians to return home and warned of the potential for the violence to spread. The visit follows increased hostilities in the West Bank, northern Israel, and missile strikes from Yemen's Houthi rebels. The U.S., a major ally of Israel, aims to address the civilian death toll and press Israel on compliance with international humanitarian law. The ongoing conflict has resulted in significant casualties and displacement in Gaza, with international efforts to prevent further escalation. In addition, journalists, including two from Al Jazeera, have been killed, and attacks on hospitals have forced evacuations. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pledged to continue until total victory, while violence surged in the West Bank and Hezbollah fired rockets at Israel's northern border. The situation remains tense, with diplomatic efforts underway to prevent a broader war. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, during his fourth trip to the Middle East since the start of the Israel-Hamas war on October 7, expressed concern that the conflict could escalate, causing more insecurity and suffering. Blinken, along with Qatari Prime Minister Al Thani, emphasized the need to prevent the conflict from spreading into neighboring countries. His discussions with leaders from Turkey, Jordan, and Qatar centered on avoiding escalation and deterring new fronts. The U.S. diplomat called it a matter of global concern and highlighted ongoing conflicts in the region, including Israel-Hamas, Israel-Hezbollah, Houthi attacks in the Red Sea, and strikes against U.S. military personnel. The trip aims to address the precarious situation in the region and discuss the future governance of Gaza. Both Blinken and Thani rejected calls for the resettlement of Palestinians outside Gaza, emphasizing support for their return to their homes. The war has resulted in significant casualties and displacement, with diplomatic efforts underway to prevent further escalation. 
A confidential U.S. intelligence report suggests that Israel may struggle to win a war against Hezbollah in Lebanon, especially if it opens a new front on its northern border. The U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, highlights that the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, would be stretched fighting on two fronts, with the Air Force already engaged in constant raids on Gaza. The report warns that IDF pilots would face more dangerous missions against Hezbollah's powerful air defenses. Tensions between Israel and Hezbollah have escalated since October 8, with both sides exchanging cross-border fire. The IDF claims to have completed combat operations in northern Gaza but remains on high alert for potential conflict in the north. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has been meeting with regional leaders to prevent further escalation, emphasizing the potential for the conflict to spread and cause more insecurity and suffering in the region. The report also notes internal divisions within Israel's government, prompting Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to propose lie detector tests for officials to prevent leaks to the press. The World Health Organization, WHO, reported that it has been unable to reach the northern part of the Gaza Strip for almost two weeks amid the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas. A planned mission to al Ada Hospital and four other locations in northern Gaza was cancelled for the fourth time due to a lack of security guarantees. The WHO highlighted the challenges of heavy bombardment, limited movement, and disrupted communications, making it nearly impossible to deliver medical supplies to the isolated region. The organization emphasized the urgent need for safe access to northern Gaza, stating that further delays would result in more deaths and increased suffering. WHO head Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus called for immediate action to address the growing humanitarian crisis in the area. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has been in the hospital since January 1, but key decision-makers, including President Joe Biden, were not informed until Thursday. The Pentagon's lack of transparency regarding Austin's hospitalization has raised concerns, especially given the national security challenges the U.S. is currently facing. Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks was only notified on Thursday, prompting her to prepare statements for Congress and consider returning to Washington. President Biden was also not informed until Thursday by his national security adviser, Jake Sullivan. Austin, 70, is hospitalized due to complications following a minor elective medical procedure. The delay in notifying the public has sparked criticism, with calls for a full accounting of the facts from lawmakers. In a statement, Austin took responsibility for the lack of transparency and committed to improving communication. The Pentagon Press Association expressed outrage over the delay in alerting the public, emphasizing the importance of being informed about the health status of top defense leaders, especially amid ongoing security threats. Lloyd Austin, the U.S. defense chief, is facing calls for his removal as he kept President Joe Biden unaware of his hospitalization for four days. Austin was admitted on New Year's Day, but the White House was not informed until January 4. The situation has led to criticism from Republicans, with some demanding his replacement. During Austin's absence, a U.S. military airstrike occurred in Baghdad, raising questions about the extent of delegation and decision-making. The Pentagon faced accusations of failing to inform Congress promptly, eroding public trust in the Biden administration. Austin, now recovering, took full responsibility and acknowledged the need for better communication. U.S. congressional leaders, including Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and House Speaker Mike Johnson, have reached a deal on the top-line spending level for the current fiscal year, reducing the likelihood of a partial government shutdown on January 20. The agreement sets the cap for the 12 annual spending bills at $1.59 trillion, addressing Democrats' concerns about immediate cuts to domestic agency budgets. However, the deal does not include an agreement to block conservative policy writers, potentially leading to future conflicts. President Joe Biden welcomed the deal, urging Republicans to fund critical priorities. The U.S. faces two government shutdown deadlines on January 19 and February 2. The agreement includes offsetting spending cuts, with $16 billion above the debt ceiling agreement, but some conservatives criticize it, while Democrats emphasize protecting domestic priorities. The deal prevents certain budget moves and sets the stage for detailed negotiations on spending bills. Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft is considering removing President Biden from the election ballot, following efforts in other states to disqualify former President Trump due to his actions during the Capitol riot on January 6, 2021. The U.S. Supreme Court is expected to decide whether Trump can appear on Republican primary ballots in Colorado, 
where the state Supreme Court cited the 14th Amendment's insurrection clause in disqualifying him. Maine's Secretary of State also decided to remove Trump from the ballot for the same reason. Ashcroft, a Republican, criticized these efforts as disgraceful and stated that if the Supreme Court does not overturn them, secretaries of state will ensure the same standards apply to Biden. Republicans argue that such attempts undermine the will of voters, while Democrats have faced criticism for their actions against Trump. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick previously suggested taking Biden off the ballot in Texas, citing concerns about his handling of the southern border. More than a dozen states, including Missouri, have signaled support for Trump in a letter submitted to the Supreme Court. The White House declined to comment on the matter. Japanese Foreign Minister Yoko Kamikawa, during her visit to Kiev, pledged Japan's support for Ukraine in defending against Russian aggression. Japan will contribute $37 million to a NATO fund, with the funds directed towards Ukraine's air defense and drone detection systems to counter Russia's combat drone attacks. Japan has been backing Ukraine in its fight against the Russian invasion and has imposed sanctions against Russia in alignment with the West. Despite expressing support, Japan's pacifist constitution prohibits direct weapon supply to Ukraine. Kamikawa's visit follows similar discussions by her predecessor and Japan's prime minister a few months ago. Russia initiated a large-scale missile attack across Ukraine, targeting residential and industrial facilities and causing injuries, according to Ukrainian officials. The assault began during peak morning hours, prompting air raid alerts nationwide. The Ukrainian Air Force reported multiple waves of cruise missile threats and ballistic missiles in certain regions. The extent of the damages and specific targets remained unclear, and there was no immediate comment from Moscow. Cities such as Krivi Rih, Kharkiv, and Zaporizhia experienced missile strikes, resulting in injuries and damage to residential and industrial areas. The ongoing conflict, initiated by Russia nearly two years ago, has shifted to increased airstrikes as both sides struggle to make significant gains along the front lines. Kiev and Kharkiv have witnessed some of the largest attacks during this period. Russia's election commission has registered two candidates, Leonid Slutsky from the Liberal Democratic Party and Vladislav Devenka from the New People Party, to oppose President Vladimir Putin in the 2024 elections. Both candidates hold positions in the state Duma, but analysts view them as token opposition. Putin, who submitted his nomination papers last month, is widely expected to win the election, given his enduring popularity with an 82% approval rating. Putin has held positions as president or prime minister since 1999, and despite the registration of nominal opposition candidates, not all individuals seeking to run against him have been cleared. A former TV journalist and critic of the war in Ukraine, Yekaterina Duntsova, was disqualified due to numerous violations in her candidacy application. In 2023, Ukraine achieved a significant victory in the Black Sea, forcing the Russian fleet to retreat from Sevastopol in Crimea. The success, achieved through drone and missile attacks, was a personal blow to President Putin, who had celebrated the annexation of Crimea in 2014. The maritime victory also allowed Ukraine to establish a corridor for grain shipments, countering Russia's decision to cancel an export deal. Despite facing challenges in its ground counteroffensive, Ukraine's achievements in the Black Sea have been highlighted by President Zelensky as a symbol of strength. The use of drones and missiles, including British Storm Shadow missiles, played a crucial role in Ukraine's naval success. The economic impact is evident as well, with Ukraine sending over 200 ships carrying 7 million tons of cargo, providing a welcome boost to the economy. The victories in the Black Sea not only challenged Russia's naval dominance but also weakened logistical networks crucial for the resupply of the Russian army in southern Ukraine. While naval supremacy may not receive as much attention as ground games, it holds strategic importance, threatening Moscow's military strength in the long term. The inability to blockade Ukraine successfully and launch cruise missiles from Sevastopol indicates Russia's limitations. China has detained the head of an overseas consulting firm, identified as Huang, accusing them of spying on China for the British government. According to China's spy agency, the consultant from a third country was employed by the UK's MI6 intelligence service to conduct espionage activities. The consultant allegedly provided the UK with state secrets and intelligence. This incident reflects Beijing's continued scrutiny of the consulting sector, which has faced an anti-espionage crackdown over the past year. The Chinese Ministry of State Security, 
MSS, accused MI6 of approaching Huang in 2015 for intelligence cooperation and training them for espionage activities. This marks the first time the MSS has alleged British spying on its official WeChat account. The incident underscores China's efforts to tighten control over espionage activities, with a new counter-espionage law expanding the list of activities considered spying. The MSS has become more public recently, including launching a comic series based on real-life espionage cases. The MSS stated that consular visits have been arranged after enforcing criminal measures on Huang. Taiwan's defense ministry reported detecting three more Chinese balloons flying over the Taiwan Strait, one of which crossed the island. The ministry accused China of threatening aviation safety and engaging in psychological warfare ahead of key Taiwanese elections. China's defense ministry has not responded to requests for comment. Taiwan has been on high alert for Chinese military and political activity, alleging that China is exerting pressure to interfere in the elections. China considers Taiwan its territory, a claim rejected by Taiwan. The use of balloons for spying became a global issue last February when the U.S. shot down what it claimed was a Chinese surveillance balloon. The latest incident adds to a series of reported Chinese balloons over the Taiwan Strait in recent weeks. The ruling Democratic Progressive Party's vice presidential candidate urged China to stop harassing Taiwan, emphasizing the desire for peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. The opposition Kuomintang's vice presidential candidate called for China to refrain from sending aircraft and warships in the strait in the lead-up to the election. The Taiwan Strait's median line, which previously served as an unofficial barrier, is regularly crossed by Chinese fighter jets, drones, and now balloons. China's Taiwan Affairs Office rejected the existence of the median line and accused Taiwan's ruling Democratic Progressive Party of hyping up threats from the mainland. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has offered to meet with former leader Rodrigo Duterte amid rumors of destabilization efforts linked to Duterte. The growing cracks in the alliance between the two political families, who produced landslide victories in 2022, are evident as Duterte denied involvement in undermining his successor. The discord comes as Marcos seeks domestic support for asserting the nation's rights in the South China Sea. The rift became more visible as the Dutertes distanced themselves from Marcos' strategy of strengthening ties with the U.S., and Sara Duterte faced criticism from Marcos' allies in Congress. The recent developments may impact Marcos's ability to extend influence beyond his term ending in 2028. Duterte has expressed comfort with Marcos and denied seeking a replacement for the current leader. The Philippines faces a significant challenge from state-sponsored cyberattacks, with a lack of resources hindering its ability to combat the threat. A Chinese group named Stately Taurus was implicated in a November cyberattack on a Philippine government agency, coinciding with tensions in the South China Sea. Cybersecurity breaches are widespread in the Philippines, with over 60,000 user accounts compromised in the third quarter of the previous year. The government's cyber response team is understaffed, with only 35 members, leading to collaborations with anonymous, black hat, hackers for threat intelligence. The shortage of funds is a primary obstacle, and experts emphasize the growing importance of cybersecurity in the country's defense strategy. China, considered a major cyber espionage threat, denies such allegations and often portrays itself as a victim of hacking.